Hello, so this is a tu tutorial on um, how to use Pixlr.com or Photoshop to make art a bit like Emma Larson's here who we're looking at um, and she's using lots of watercolour so obviously the first step is to go away and see if you can get some um, images like this one, not like this one but just watercolour marks that we're then going to cut up and play with in Pixlr okay so uh let me show you what i've done a much simpler version i'll have to say um i have to admit that i slightly cheated and maybe in the first instance you could cheat too how do we cheat well clever old google google you can um actually google some for watercolor marks and go to tools size large and people have actually input watercolour marks so you might want to try that on the other hand you might think it's much much better and it is to make your own if you have watercolour at home okay um, we can see on google we do get there are quite a few a very good resolution 1000 yeah that's all right um that'll be just about okay yeah so uh, you can just right, right click and copy image or save image to play with what you can find on Google if you're just having um, you know, your first go at this. Okay, so here we are back to here. Um, we've started off with a white layer in our, our background and we have brought in, uh, what have we got here, this blue blob. Um, so you can see that when it was actually made, it was probably much, much smaller, but um, when it's scanned at high resolution, it uh, you can really blow it up and you know go in quite far and it's it's really good quality and it, it sort of bring the highlights those water marks you get. So um, what I did here was this is actually two pink marks um, blended by using the um, multiple uh, blend mode and then merged together. So it was two layers originally. And um, you can see that you can sort of keep creating duplicates to in order to have stuff to play with and that you can then move around and you can you know keep playing with that blend mode and get more and more complicated objects um now these ones seem to have uh let me just do it on this one hold on um it does have its uh its white um background is still there now these ones are so clean that it will work well if i get my magic wand and i want to get rid of that white weird shaped background uh i can actually do that and it worked really really well um it depends on your watercolor marks really if they're ones that you've made you might find you might get really frustrated and find that the white when you're selecting the white with your magic wand it's actually going to to eat out half of your shapes as well to avoid that you can play with the tolerance even then it still might not work but you take it down when you want it to be more sensitive to the color also feathering is worth playing with okay um right i'm just gonna uh delete that uh, white bit while i've got it on there um and actually put my white background back on i've also got a green one here got some blue blobs and i'm being quite disciplined about naming my layers um i need by the way it's a v if you want to press uh, uh to go to the moving tool this one at the top the sort of arrange or select tool you just press v it's a very useful shortcut so what blending mode have i got that on darken okay that's quite interesting um, when you've got sort of some kind of combination that you like, uh, you might want to then go to merge the layers to create one, la one, one layer, just to keep it more interesting. So you can go merge down, merge down, merge down, and then merge as many layers as you la like to make one. So for example here, uh, blobs combi combined, this layer, um, this is what it looks like when it is not... Uh, blended so it's still got its white background on um, and what we can do is put it on the blend mode I quite like color burn on this instance because it gets really um, you know intense colors there okay 
So you can have a lot of fun with that and really play with combinations of um, you know your marks. You can even, um, for example, here's a blue one. What happens if I try and go to adjustment, hue and saturation? You can change the colours once it is, um, you know, on your screen. Uh, so you know, you don't necessarily. You, you could just do this with coffee, for example, and change the colours on your screen after you've get, got them all scanned and onto your program. And uh, when you've got a combination or a, com a composition of blobs that you like or watercolour marks, you can just go to File, Save, and then save that as a JPEG, download it to your computer, and then you'll be bringing that JPEG into a new file to play with again in Part 2.